New York City is home to thousands of bridges. They shuttle millions of goods, services, and people to and from the core of America's most economically dynamic metropolis every day. From the Brooklyn Bridge to the Williamsburg Bridge, to the soaring heights of the George Washington Bridge, this suite of engineering marvels has helped build New York into the hulking global city it is today. What people don't realize is that we are the only 14-lane suspension bridge in the world. We are the busiest bridge in the world. They have also set the tone for how bridges are designed across the United States. But with millions of vehicles crossing these aging structures daily, keeping them safe and functioning requires detailed cross-departmental planning and around-the-clock repairs. We've already replaced 296 of the suspender ropes on the bridge. Here's how America's largest city builds and maintains some of the country's most famous bridges. In the 1800s, the city of New York was just this, Manhattan. Except for a few crossings on the Harlem River at the island's northern tip, the only way into the city was via ferry. But even this disconnected geography couldn't slow the flood of immigration during the Industrial Revolution. By 1860, New York and the nearby port of Brooklyn ranked as the first and third largest cities in the United States. But they were separated by the East River, and the overcrowded city was in desperate need of relief. A bridge was becoming increasingly necessary. The only problem? A bridge to this magnitude had never been built before. Due to the East River's width, it would need to be longer than any other bridge in the world, but still tall enough for ships to pass underneath. Because the East River is technically a saltwater estuary, it would need to be strong enough to endure the turbulence of the Atlantic Ocean. For most civil engineers, this was simply too many obstacles to overcome. But this did not deter engineer John Roebling. He was a pioneer of a new type of technology that allowed bridges to span greater distances. The suspension bridge design relied on thick cables strung between two towers. Together, they could hold the weight of a much longer bridge deck. This is what Roebling had in mind for New York City. On April 16, 1867, the state approved construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. It was a risky and tumultuous endeavor that resulted in tragedy. More than 20 workers died during construction, and John Roebling didn't live to see his vision come to life. But on May 24, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge finally opened amid great fanfare. It was, at the time, the longest suspension bridge in the world. The Brooklyn Bridge immediately spurred massive growth for the larger New York City area. Its success inspired the construction of more suspension bridges. One of those bridges at the complete opposite end of the island is the imposing George Washington Bridge. In 1931, it took the title of world's longest bridge. Its 600-foot tall towers carried a deck that spanned 3,500 feet across the Hudson River. Today, it's the busiest motor vehicle bridge in the world. Over 220 vehicles cross every minute. That sort of wear and tear demands regular upkeep. 
so city officials granted almost $2 billion towards the restoring the George program. The goal is to make it last another 100 years. So we strip off the, the outer casing, we clean up the wires uh, that, are, that are there, we repair any broken ones that, that exist, and then we seal it back up. We wrap it with a new wire wrapping, paint that outside, and then, and then put an elastomeric wrap over top of all of it. On this side of the bridge, on the north side of the bridge, we've replaced all the suspender ropes. There's, so there's 592 suspender ropes on the entire bridge, both sides. Part of the complication with doing this work here, replacing this roadway, was how to do it without disrupting the, the traveling public. So this project on its own was broken into 15 stages. We had to do it piecemeal. So we would do a strip at a time. The George Washington Bridge Restoration Project is expected to be completed sometime in 2025. Most of New York's notable bridges have surpassed or are nearing a century of service. You need to maintain them on a daily basis. You need to clean them. You need to uh, have a uh, emergency response system in the event of, of accidents. There's a constant traffic management challenge peak periods. Multiple organizations operate the more than 2,000 bridges and tunnels in the city. A variety of other state and federal organizations provide an additional layer of oversight. Keeping up with all the needs of each bridge is a constant challenge. But in general, many of the crossings tend to be suffering from two primary issues, age and ever-increasing use. In 2021, New York State made $200 million available to local governments to enhance bridge resiliency. But structural upgrades are just one part of bridge management. Bridge authorities are also responsible for keeping travelers safe. The Port Authority, for example, even has its own EMS service specially trained to deal with conditions bridges and tunnels present. They are called tunnel and bridge agents. This is actually the more typical, if you ever hear Jaws of Life, they talk about it's a big spreader. So what it does is when we open and close the teeth, it basically sprays the material away. Prospective agents do most of their training at the Middlesex County Fire Academy just outside New York City in Sayreville, New Jersey. You're driving across a GW bridge and your car breaks down. They're the men and women out there, whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, whether it's 0 degrees out, 100 degrees out like it is today, they're out there taking care of our customers to keep them safe, secure, and make it an enjoyable experience. This is, this is a unique position that the tunnel bridge agents have. They utilize multiple different disciplines where normally some of these disciplines are separate on the outside. Most of the uh, tasks that they'll be uh, required to do will be towing. That would be the most common thing. On, a, on an average, they probably do about 80 to 85% of their job is involving uh, responding to disabled vehicles. When a vehicle accident occurs in a bridge or tunnel, it's all hands on deck. Once at the scene, agents employ techniques that apply specifically to bridge and tunnel rescues. If we're called out for an entrapment, we would um, pull up, make sure the victim's uh, vitals, if he's conscious, unconscious, stabilize the victim, and then we would proceed to stabilize the vehicle, and de depending on which, which side the person's on, if he's the driver, we would take the, the, the door off, see if he's pinned. Sometimes it comes in as a, a pin job, we call it. Sometimes you can just open a door, and, uh, but if, it, if that's not the case, we we'll use the uh, jaws of life. We prepare him for these different things, but what actually happens, that's, you know, every day could be a different day. While this unique group of first responders are keeping people safe, policymakers have also been working to bring New York's bridge technology into the 21st century. 
For half a century, the city relied on its existing suite of bridges. The last major bridge the city saw completed was the Verrazano Narrows Bridge in 1964. But as the region works to stay competitive with its global counterparts, new bridge projects are once again in vogue. Two thousand seventeen saw the opening of the new cable stayed Kosciusko Bridge in Brooklyn. This was followed shortly by the Gothels and Mill Basin bridges. One proposal, currently deemed the Queen's Ribbon, would connect Midtown Manhattan and Queens and serve only pedestrians and cyclists. From street art to pedestrian bridges, special emergency responders, massive renovation projects, and that daring act from John Roebling, New York City's bridges hold a wealth of stories. They have been there for every major chapter of the city's development, and they've fueled New York's growth, helping it become a global center of culture, finance, and creativity. Now they are guiding the city through the 21st century with stunning acts of civil engineering and new ideas about how to facilitate sustainable urban transportation. No one knows what New York's bridges will look like a century from now, but one thing is for sure, they will remain a crucial part of the city's identity.